Hey guys, and welcome to the Star Wars Day Review. Now, if you guys remember last year's Star Wars review, I had a really bad bout of the flu, so things are a bit hazy for me, but Horse said that I was, I was pretty grumpy, and for that, I would like to apologize to everyone. Horse also said I reviewed Dark Forces for the PC, so I thought, hey, why not this year review the sequel? Today, we're taking a look back at Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2. Star Wars Jedi Knight is an action first and third person shooter published and developed by LucasArts and released for the PC in 1997. It is the sequel to the 1995 hit game Dark Forces. The most significant improvements Jedi Knight made over Dark Forces was the use of the Force and lightsabers. The Force plays an integral part in how you play the game and shape the narrative of the story. The development team also implemented a system for gaining points to use towards Force powers. This was designed with an RPG style in mind, allowing you to choose which force powers to improve upon. Jedi Knight also implements in between levels full motion video cutscenes. The cutscenes at the time featured the first lightsaber footage filmed since Return of the Jedi in 1983. After the release of Jedi Knight, LucasArts developed Mysteries of the Sith and released it in 1998 as an expansion to the original game. It actually feels more like a what-if scenario, including the most popular characters of the Star Wars Expanded Universe, Kyle Katarn and Mar Jade. There were some technical improvements with this expansion, such as colored lighting, more textures, and improved enemy AI. Well guys, with these tidbits out of the way, let's jump into Star Wars Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2. The controls are greatly improved over the first game as you can use the mouse to freely look around your environments instead of the keyboard-based controls from Dark Forces. Every button command feels much more responsive. They really tightened up the controls to an already solid layout. But the greatest addition to the gameplay mechanics is the introduction of Force Powers and the lightsaber. They radically change the way you play the game. The lightsaber is of course the ultimate melee weapon, it can deflect blaster shots, and with force speed you can rush into a group of enemies, hacking and slashing them away. In addition to being an effective weapon, the lightsaber is also a useful tool providing light in the dark and cutting through obstacles. I like what the development team did setting up the new mechanics. You start out the first couple of levels reorienting yourself. It feels like the original game with improvements to gameplay and controls, but then the game gives you a lightsaber and force powers and suddenly you find yourself testing the boundaries of the game with your newfound abilities. It's excellent game design that really immersed me into this game. The development team introduced an alternative third person view and it works great when you're using the lightsaber, but first person is still best for when you're using blasters. There are three types of force powers, light, dark, and neutral. Light force powers provide non-violent advantages such as being able to restore health and persuade enemies to ignore you. Dark force powers are violent and give you the ability to throw objects or choke enemies. Neutral powers enhance athletic abilities such as being able to jump higher or run faster. There are 14 powers in total, 4 of each type, and a bonus power in both light and dark, if you stay true to either the light or dark side path. You earn stars to use toward force powers by completing levels. By finding all the secrets in a level, you can also gain one bonus star to use. Between levels, you can choose which force powers to enhance by allocating stars to that power. Stars cannot be reused from powers later on, so make sure that you are spending the star on the path that you want to follow. There are a variety of hostile and non-hostile NPCs in each level that you can interact with. There are two endings to the game depending on how you play the game. If you don't harm innocents and focus on collecting light force powers, you will get the light side ending. Vice versa, if you kill innocent characters and obtain dark force powers, the game will end with the dark side ending. 
Level design is decent, however the levels can be a bit linear. You will likely hit some frustrating brick walls where you don't know where to go or what to do. The enemy AI has been slightly improved over its predecessor, but all in all they are still just mindless grunts and require little skill to overcome. The biggest improvements are the boss battles against the main villains, the Dark Jedi. They require a little bit of strategy, but once you figure out their weaknesses, they are fairly manageable. This is a great improvement over the mindless shooting in Dark Forces boss battles. To finish up, Jedi Knight's improved controls with innovative new gameplay mechanics combined with the mindless AI enemy grunts and sometimes dull and frustrating linear level design, gameplay gets three bits. Dark side, I've been there. Do your worst. Out of four. One of the many things LucasArts was known for was awesome sound, and Jedi Knight is no exception to this rule. Unlike its predecessor's digitized music, the original John Williams score comes in full surround sound. The quality is top notch. Sound effects are great, and with the use of surround sound give you what I like to call audio immersion. Copyright. As blaster shots, voices, and footsteps sound like they're happening all around you, and not just in the screen in front of you. The voice work is great too, well aside from the full motion videos, there's not a whole lot of awkward line deliveries, which is a pleasant surprise as that era was rife with terrible voice deliveries. The sound does have some negatives, I really love John Williams' score to the movies, but I wish Jedi Knight had created some of their own soundtracks to give the game its own musical theme and tone, but sadly it's nowhere to be found. Also in a lot of areas the music would end and not loop back to the beginning of the song. The game is noticeably well, empty with the so absence of music, there, with great sound it. quality but with a soundtrack that is lacking in originality and huge you. sections of levels that are lacking cool, accompanying right? music, Jedi Knight's sound gets two bits. The dark side, I've been there. Do your worst. Out of four. Can you meet me there when you're finished with the crow? Of course. Is everything okay? I don't know. I'll find out when I get there. The mid to late 90s were a transitional era between 2D and 2.5D graphic style games to full 3D graphics. Jedi Knight was one of those transitional titles. The graphics for the time are good, but have not aged with grace by today's standards. The characters in the game are jaggedy and disproportioned in their shapes, but at the time of its release it was one of the best looking games out there, and I would say one of the better graphically visual games of that era. A technological achievement of this title is its fully 3D environments. Not just the characters in the game, but the buildings and vehicles are also fully rendered in 3D. This was achieved by using a brand new engine called the Sith Engine. Wait, what? Why does that sound familiar? They should have called it the they Sith Engine! The Sith Engine! Sith Engine! Sith Engine! That wasn't real. It was a dream, wasn't it? So, so the Sith engine is an early example of a scripted game engine. Most object behaviors are implemented with an integrated COG scripting language or defined parametrically using a template system which allows simple inheritance. The engine is also an example of a portal engine. Levels require no pre-processing and hidden surface determination is computed at runtime. Jedi Knight's story takes place after Return of the Jedi and follows protagonist Kyle Katarn as a personal journey sends him on the path to become a Jedi and puts him at odds with Jarek a dark Jedi and leader of a remnant faction of the Empire. The story opens up with a nod to the original Star Wars opening from 1977. The scene then cuts to Jarek interrogating Ron, a Jedi Master. After some lengthy exposition on the location of the Valley of the Jedi and the reason Jarek is motivated to find it, which by the way is the reason any good antagonist is motivated and that's to become all-powerful. Jarek is able to ascertain that Morgan Katarn, Kyle Katarn's father, knew where the Valley was located. Ron attempts to fight back but is stopped and killed by Jarek. We return to Nar Shadda, a planet featured in the original Dark Forces. Kyle Katarn meets with a droid informant, 8T88, in hopes of finding information about his deceased father. 88 informs Katarn that his father was killed by a Dark Jedi named Jarek, 
and has acquired a disc with information for him from his father. 88 then double crosses Katarn and a chase ensues ending with Katarn injuring 88 by shooting off its arm holding the disc. Once Kyle gets the disc, a TIE bomber attacks and injures Kyle. Jan Ors, who is Kyle Katarn's old partner from Dark Forces, flying in the crow, comes to the rescue and takes Kyle away to a medical frigate to heal his wounds. While recovering, Kyle gets a vision from Ron, telling him about the Valley of the Jedi and setting him on the journey to stop Jarek and become a Jedi. Kyle and Jan return to his home planet and family home where they discover Jarek's disciples have already been there and taken the map of the valley which was hidden in the stone ceiling of the house. Kyle finds the family droid Ouija, Katarn inserts the disc from 88 and is shown a recording of his father Morgan Katarn. Morgan tells him that he had left two very important items. The first was a lightsaber which belonged to the Jedi Ron, and the second was a map to the Valley of the Jedi which was embedded in the stone ceiling. After practicing his saber skills, Katarn and Jan head to the Baron's Head where 88 is hiding out deciphering the map for Jarek. After making his way through the city into the tower, Katarn confronts 88 asking for the map. 88 replies that he has all the info he needs and slips away while Yoon, a brash young dark Jedi, attacks Kyle. Once Kyle defeats Yoon, he tells him to finish him off, Katarn spares his life and sets off after 88. Katarn is able to track 88 to an Imperial fuel station. Once Kyle is able to sneak aboard, he discovers 88 was killed by Jarek's disciples, the twins, the small pick, and the much larger Gork. Another lightsaber duel commences, this one much harder than Yoon's battle, as Katarn has to face two Dark Jedi, but after they are defeated, Katarn claims 88's head and he and Jan set off for the Valley of the Jedi, following after Jarek. After fighting through some mountainous terrain, Kyle makes his way to Jarek's cargo ship and is attacked by the very aggressive Dark Jedi Maw. After a tough battle, Katarn once again has the choice to spare Dark Jedi's life, but after the very theatrically dramatic Maw stops bragging about sticking Morgan Katarn's head on a pike, he is understandably killed by Kyle. Jarek appears and commends Katarn for giving into the dark side. It is revealed that Jan has been captured, and as a final test, Jarek demands Katarn strike her down. Now, depending on your choices of force powers, you will either enter the light side story arc or the dark side story arc. In the light side choice, Kyle refuses and is sent flying into a cargo ship. The force of Jarek's attack causes enough damage for the ship to begin plummeting. Kyle rushes through the falling ship to find the crow docked in it. After jumping aboard, Kyle barely escapes and crash lands the crow. The three remaining Dark Jedi disciples, Bok, a crazy Twi'lek, Yoon, who we met previously, and Saris, Jarek's second in command, find the incapacitated Katarn and pull him out of the wreckage. Crazy old Bok smashes Katarn's lightsaber as Saris takes out her lightsaber, and as she's about to strike Katarn down, Yoon jumps in the way. As she asks why, Yoon replies that Katarn is a Jedi and deserves a battle. Katarn takes Yoon's lightsaber and begins a duel with Saris as Bok rejoins Jarek deep in the Valley of the Jedi. Once Saris is defeated, Katarn must leg through a few more levels before he reaches the valley. He finds Jan tied to a pole. After rescuing her, Bok surprises them from behind, brandishing two lightsabers. Bok then attacks Katarn, but is defeated. At this point, Jarek, who has already entered the valley, awakes from his meditation inside it. Having mastered a great amount of power from the valley, he duels Katarn. As they fight, Jarek sets in motion an ancient machine that will eventually grant him the full power of the valley. Kyle stops him from doing it, and eventually, after a number of tries, Jarek is worn out. Jarek lays at the mercy of Katarn, remarking that he's defenseless and implores Katarn to strike him down. To further entice Katarn to the dark side, he reminds Kyle that he was the one who murdered his father. Katarn refuses, instead giving Jarek back his saber so they can finish their fight honorably. After a final dramatic charge, Kyle kills Jarek, releasing the spirits that had been trapped in the valley. As a tribute to his father and Ron, Katarn erects two statues in the valley. Jan and Ouija stand beside him as Katarn thanks his father and the credits roll. Thank you, father. If you chose the dark side, Kyle will ruthlessly murder his longtime friend Jan Ors. Then events play out parallel to the light side, minus the battle with Saris, 
When you defeat Jarek, Kyle assumes control of a re-emergent empire and Ceres at his side. It ends with, I would say, a sad note as Kyle's watching an old hologram that he played at the beginning of the story where his dad is remarking how proud he was of him. How very proud I am of you. The story is big in scope and delves much deeper into the Gatarn character than the previous installment. Jedi Knight has an epic plot with some flat notes here and there, mainly with the awkward acting in the full motion videos and the dragged out levels of Kyle trying to get to the center of the Valley of the Jedi, but it's bigger and better than its predecessor in all storytelling aspects. Jedi Knight's aging but top notch for its era graphics with a solid story give its presentation three bits. What would you do without me, Kyle? I'd be a content old man. Out of four. Ah! Star Wars Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2 is a great and fun game, and I completely fell back in love with this title, capturing footage for it. It's immersive gameplay and unique storytelling that adds a lot of depth to a beloved Star Wars character is everything I could ever want from a Star Wars title. And I think a lot of teams that are currently working on Star Wars games could take note of what LucasArts did with this title and many others, as I feel the current releases in the franchise have not lived up to the same standard as LucasArts. Well, Bioware excluded, of course. My final verdict for Star Wars Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2, it's a must-play and own for the casual player or avid collector. It's one of those rare times that you see a sequel build more on what was already great in a series, while also taking some chances with new gameplay mechanics. Well guys, that's it for this review. May the 4th be with you, and as always, stay safe and play on!